Yo, what's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint, back with another recent reads. I just got done reading The Ultimate Spider Omnibus Volume 1, so y'all stay tuned. No spoilers. All good stuff. Alright guys, so check this out. I have read a good amount of Ultimate Spider-Man throughout the years. I remember when I first found out about him, I went back and read specific storylines, like the Venom storyline, the Clone Saga. I've read all the death of uh, Ultimate Spider-Man that led into the Miles Morales stuff. But I never sat down and just read it, you know, front to back. So, on my way to New York Comic Con, I picked up a book. And um, I started reading Ultimate Spider-Man by Bendis uh, and Bagley. You know, one of my favorite writers, one of my favorite artists. Although the early 2000s Bagley is not really my favorite Bagley. I like his 90s stuff. But this contains issues 1 through 39 and Ultimate Spider-Man 1 half. So you get almost 40 issues. You get a big chunk here. And it's a complete retelling of Spider-Man's story in the in the modern age now they definitely change some things but i think they do it in, in a tasteful way and they, and they make everything more grounded in reality if you read amazing spider-man the stan lee steve dicko run in issue one he's already in outer space you know what i'm saying so they did a good job of grounding this more uh the first arc where he gets his powers it, it's play by play uh of the Sam Raimi trilogy, which I believe the movie's borrowed from this book. Don't quote me on that. But very similar with uh, Peter Parker in high school and getting bullied. And they introduced some different characters, like um, Kong is like a big uh, bully guy. You got Flash Thompson. We, we get Mary Jane right away. And we get Gwen Stacy a little bit later. But right away it establishes Norman Osbo uh, Osborn as the big bad. And that Oscorp is responsible for these experiments on spiders and other things. And, you know, not to give out any spoilers, but Norman Osborn uh, quickly becomes his first villain as the Green Goblin. Now, when I was when I was reading this, I was like, oh, this makes sense. They're going to skip, you know, stuff like the Enforcers and, and stuff that was in the early ASM volumes. But they actually do have the Enforcers in here. But they're just a little bit easier to read. You get Electro, you get Kingpin, you get Doc Ock. Craven, uh, which is kind of very different. Craven is like a reality star show. The Doc Ock origin is sick. The Goblin powers are kind of cool. So if you guys know anything about Ultimate Spider-Man, he's almost like Abomination or like uh, an Incredible Hulk uh, type of Green Goblin. And they do a really cool job of like showing a Spider-Man versus Green Goblin scenario. And then in the next issue, showing it from Green Goblin's perspective and how he's got voices in his head and why he was saying certain things he was saying during the battle in the previous issue. And it kind of shows his like psychosis a little bit, which was dope. The symbiote stuff and the Venom stuff definitely was changed to give it a more grounded reality and to make more of a personal relationship between Eddie Brock and Peter Parker and Peter Parker's parents. So they're also dead in this run and it's kind of similar to the plane crash like we saw in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. It's definitely cool to see Peter Parker as a young kid in more of a modern time, not in the 60s, how he deals with his powers and his relationships, you know, with Aunt May, with Gwen Stacy, Captain Stacy. You know, it's, it's cool. It's the ultimate universe, right? Now, I get a feeling that Bagley really just wanted to retell Spider-Man's story. And in doing so, you know, you hear little things about mutants. You see... Uh, the Wasp, and she mentions she's a card-carrying member of the Ultimates. And I don't know if it was the grand scheme to plan an entire Ultimates universe, or if it just kind of came organically out of Spider-Man. But it ends up being its own universe that lasted for, what, 20 years or so? 15 years? The only thing about this omnibus is that it's, um... Well, first of all, it had a $100 cover price, and I'm pretty sure it's out of print. So it might be difficult to get at cover price. But it's labeled Volume 1, hasn't been a Volume 2 in sight, and the only way to read the rest of this story in oversized format like this is to collect uh, the 12 oversized hardcovers. This collects everything that's in the first three, so you gotta hunt down Volumes 4 and 12 to get the rest of the story, 
that then lead up to the death of Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus. And from what I understand, a couple of those volumes are kind of hard to find. I did think it was cool that this book was an all red leather hardcover with uh, silver logos and fonts and everything and words. So uh, let's take a look at the artwork inside. Very clean artwork, early 2000s, Bagley. But you know, you could tell they, they started uh, dabbling with computer uh, coloring and things like that. And uh, yeah, man, let's take a look at it. All right, here is the front of the dust jacket, Ultimate Spider-Man. A lot of these covers you can see, they use actual photographs of the city in the back, and they just did a uh, drawing on the front. Here goes the spine and the back, which shows all the covers uh, without the text. Those, I guess you would call them the virgin covers. And you can see all the issues that are in there. Collecting Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 39, Ultimate Spider-Man 1 half, $99 cover price. Here we can see the inside of the dust jacket. You get a little something about Bendis, about Mark Bagley. And then here is the actual hardcover. All right, so let's take a little look here. So here's issue one. The cover has been swiped a couple times. So you got Norman Osborn looking at some spiders. He goes, uh, first look at Peter Parker before having powers. You guys know the story. So you get MJ right away. Parker's in the middle of a food fight. He goes, Uncle Ben. We all know what happens to him. Let's fast forward a little bit here. But you can see, you know, modern type of art. There's the guy Kong, who, who's like a bully at first. So here goes Spider-Man, checking out the wrestling scene, as we all know, when he first gets his powers. This is uh, this version of his uh, wrestling suit. He goes issue four. Familiar scene, Spider-Man with a costume that doesn't have the webs yet, and... If I recall, the burglar who killed Uncle Ben. Here's a look at the Ultimate Comics Green Goblin. You can shoot fireballs and stuff. A much more refined look from Bagley compared to his stuff in the 90s. But like I said, I'm a huge fan of his 90s stuff. His Carnage stuff. His uh, clone stuff. Those Kingpin. That's going to be my cosplay next year. So what I didn't mention in the beginning is that Nick Fury comes around. And it's very much like how Nick Fury and Tony Stark's relationship is in the MCU. And I thought that was pretty cool. It actually made a lot more sense the way that Peter Parker, his relationship is with Tony Stark in the MCU. It kind of mirrors this relationship in a way goes green goblin so this was a quick read man i really enjoyed it i want to see what happens next and I gotta hurry up and pick up some of the uh, oversized hardcovers. Here goes the suit. The black suit. Here goes the Venom stuff. Gwen Stacy, Eddie Brock. The 
there's Nick Fury. Yeah. Got a sketchbook on the back. Alright guys, I hope you liked my little review of the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus. I am itching to get the oversized hardcover so I can finish uh, or fill in the gap, I should say. You know, uh, some of it I've read, like I've read the Clone Saga stuff. I think there's a Carnage thing, but uh, I definitely want to read it back to back. If anyone's got a line on volumes 4 through 12, holler at your boy, because I definitely want them up in the mix here. Um... Drop me a like on the way out. Drop me a comment about Ultimate Spider-Man. Have you read the whole series? Did this make you want to get into it? I'm sorry if you have to go hunt down a whale. I would recommend hitting your local comic shops. And, you know, the older the shop, the better. And see if they got one laying around. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more recent reads along with daily comic book content. Whether it's a... A story review, whether it's a haul video, weekly comic polls, statue unboxing and reviews, live so live shows, comic cons, movie reviews, trailer reactions, man. We, we're doing it all here at Gem and Collectibles, so thanks for checking it out. Y'all stay minty.